Hello everybody, this is Mike Fisher from Orleans Niagara BOCES, uh, your Race to the Top Network Team Specialist. And today we're going to be looking at an overview of multiple measures uh, to go along with the criteria um, around the nine requirements for the evaluator training certification. I'm going to do some of this online here and we're also going to be providing you a document uh, to read as well. Uh, we're trying to you know, not have you have to come out to the conference center uh, as much and try to leverage some of our technology for what it is we need to do. Uh, I want to talk for just a second, just a, a going back over a couple of things that we talked about when we were together before. One of those is the document that um, we gave you at the last meeting. And if you don't have a copy of this document, you can download one from the document section of uh, our Race to the Top website, which I'll navigate for you in, in a few minutes. Uh, just, you know, make sure that you're writing down that this is for multiple measures and it's covering one, two, and five. So one, two, and five. It's on the third page. Uh, just write down the date that you viewed the webinar and looked at the documentation and how long it took you to do. This, this shouldn't take total, you know, more than an hour, hour and a half. Uh, <clears throat> What we're going to look at uh, today is just other methods for evaluating teacher performance. Uh, last time we looked at evidence-based observation, so which was component two. Uh, component one is about New York State teaching standards, which all of these are addressing. And then specifically component five is about the application and use of multiple measures of evaluating teachers. This goes back to the 60% of the evaluations being based on the teacher standards and those have to be negotiated uh, you know, through the bargaining agreements and stuff. Your district gets to decide uh, what that 60% is going to look like. Um, and just realizing that observation itself is just one tool to evaluate teachers and the 60% can be any configuration of these multiple measures as decided uh, by your district and then locally and collectively bargained. Um, an observation alone, though, is not going to address each of the teaching standards. So we talked about this in our workshop that it's really going to, uh, the observation alone is going to look at instructional practice in the learning environment and perhaps give some snapshots of, of things about uh, content instructional planning and assessment for learning. But these other ones, there's going to have to be something else done to address these other teaching standards. Um, and that's regardless of the rubric that you use, even though most of you, I think, are choosing the Danielson rubric. So this is just an overview to guide you through some of the multiple measures. Um, and I want to show you what these are here. Um, we're showing you six things. Uh, observation, obviously, we've already talked about. Um, and what I did, this is the information from Erie One, and we're working with Erie One, and they've allowed us to use some of their stuff here. I've taken it actually out of their Moodle course and put together a document for you. This is the document here, and you'll have access to this on the website. It'll be with the uh, embedded video. But each of these multiple measures is referenced, as well as any samples or resources that Erie One had to go along with it. Uh, so that you would have additional information if you needed it. In here, um, one of the things that they that Erie One put together uh, was about using conferencing as another measure of uh, teacher performance. And in this section, it talks about like pre and post conferences uh, that you might do before and after an observation, the end of year review, uh, professional goal setting conferences. I know that some of you are doing um, professional growth plans, so conferencing around that would certainly be um, applicable. Um, <clears throat> this aligns with standards 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7, and it measures those non-observable classroom processes that um, you know might include the knowledge of students and student learning, planning, assessments, and professional roles and responsibilities. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because you can read this exact same information uh, in the packet. Another one is reflection. So I know that some of the districts are already using reflective components in their uh, teacher evaluation plans. And 
this is this is another option that you have. This is where teachers record what they're doing and they report on uh, the things that they're doing in their classrooms. And that can be done through surveys, um, anecdotal records, interviews, reflections, conference forms, um, end of year self-reflections, and that aligns to standards one, two, five, six, and seven. So professional roles and responsibilities, um, instructional planning, knowledge of students. Another one is artifacts that might be collected by um, the teachers as a demonstration of the quality of the instruction in the classroom. And this can include lesson plans, uh, teacher assignments, scoring rubrics, student work, uh, curriculum maps, um, different assessments, especially if they are common assessments that have been created by um, a collaborative uh, curriculum group. And they align to standards one, two, three, and five. So uh, instructional planning, knowledge of students, um, and then you know actually what's happening in the classroom. A portfolio, I know that some of the districts are also using portfolios uh, already. These can look at a lot of different things and just be a collective um, like curation of different things that a teacher might do, um, including curriculum maps, including lesson plans, pictures of interactions in the classroom, um, examples of artifacts from students. They are a little time consuming and you know they would they, they may need their own rubric uh, for determining the level at which the um, components of the portfolio uh, should be rated, you know, according to the teaching standards. So there's lots of different examples that uh, could go in there. And like I said, <clears throat> I know I'm going through these pretty quickly, but these are also in the document that we have for you. Uh, the last one here is just surveys. And these are used to gather stakeholder opinions or judgments about teaching practice. The uh, resource that we put in there is an article on um, using surveys and instruction. I know we've talked about this a little bit with the, uh, one of the principal rubrics that was all based on surveys. And so because it's subjective analysis, unless there's some sort of evidence that the survey participants can give, um, you know, you have to kind of question the validity of, of what the survey might be measuring. And it probably shouldn't be the well, and it says here, not used as a sole measure of teacher evaluation. So, and it's not going to give you a whole lot about the teacher's content, knowledge, curriculum, fulfillment, or professional activities because the people that would be doing the survey uh, might have a very narrow view of a particular teacher. You know, just like a student that's being instructed by them or a parent who communicates with that teacher, they're not going to have like a big picture global view of what that teacher's um, talents are. So, in a nutshell, those are uh, the multiple measures for teacher effectiveness. And in the document that we've created here, those are all represented. Uh, a review of observations, then conferences, reflections, artifacts, portfolios, and surveys. Uh, the document is 50 pages long. It's also in PDF form, so I know that a lot of you have your iPads or you have your digital devices. You can actually download this right to your digital device and read it whenever it's convenient for you. Um, but this is what it looks like. It goes through the multiple measures of teacher effectiveness. And just like I showed you uh, with the online interactive uh, thing in the Moodle for Erie 1, I pulled all of that out and put it into this document so you could read it when it was convenient for you. Um, <clears throat> so let me show you where this lives online and then we'll wrap this up. On the Orleans Niagara BOCES website, um, the race to the top section is here and don't forget that if you click in here on the resources page you gotta have your password to put in. So when I click on resources uh, this is where I would put my password in. I've already been in here, obviously, today, so I didn't have to do that. Uh, we've got sections in here for the documents from when we've been coming out, when you've been coming here for uh, different trainings. If you'll notice underneath here, there is a new section called Webinars. And under Webinars is where this particular webinar will live, as well as the documentation that goes with it, so that you can download it directly um, to your device and I'll also put it in a web tool here so that you can actually just read it online if you'd like. 
So that's where all of this lives. I'm going to click on Meet Your Team right here because uh, mine and Carol's phone number are uh, right here on the web page. You can email us right from this web page if you have any questions about any of this uh, as far as these multiple measures for um, teacher evaluation. But that is it in a nutshell. So we know that reading the documentation plus the viewing of this webinar should be about an hour, or hour and a half of your time. Um, and just please remember to record that on your uh, certification document uh, that you participated in this and put the date down and however long it took you. And we will be back together again in January to look at the ISLIC leadership standards. And then again in February um, after we go back to Albany and hear from them, you know, some more stuff about the APPR so that we can take care of those uh, nine components of the teacher evaluation certification uh, that, that we need to get through for this year. So any of you that are um, contacting us about when to do teacher evaluations right now, do them the way that you've always done them and you can go ahead and get started. Uh, what this teacher evaluation certification training is for is for signing off at that end of year moment. But you can go ahead and do the work that you need to do. Um, and if your district or your bargaining agreement has not decided on all the ins and outs of this, then just make sure that you're doing perhaps what you did last year uh, so that at least you're, you're getting some of the uh, evaluations done now. And as we find out more information about this from the state, we will share it with you. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day.